welcome to Watsonville, California, one of the main filming locations to the 1988 movie Killer Clowns from Outer Space and where yours truly was born and raised. Yes, I spent the first 20 years of my life living in this small town. So we're gonna go on a filming location tour and I'll show you a little bit of Watsonville, California from a Watsonville, California native's perspective. town of Crescent Cove in the movie was filmed in three separate California cities, Watsonville, Soquel, and Santa Cruz. So first we'll start off with the Watsonville locations, then we'll drive up the freeway to Soquel, and then we'll head up the highway to Santa Cruz. Our first location is right here on the corner of East Lake Avenue and Lincoln Street. The movie starts off here, at this beautiful, at the time, Art Deco style building, which in the movie was Big Top Burger. There's a large palm tree here now, where Officer Mooney parked his car. At the time of filming in the 80s, this was the Pellick Brothers Chevron service station. This is the only picture I can find of the old Pellick Brothers service station, and it looks like it's from the 1960s. Now, I don't know if the Pellick Brothers were still in business in 1987 when Killer Clowns was being filmed, but check it out, a gas pump once stood right here. That's why I think the Big Top Burger sign is so large in these scenes to cover up the old gas pump. Then the killer clowns arrive, and we get to see inside Big Top Burger. Looking through the building's glass front door, we can see that the interior has been completely remodeled over the years. I can't go in, it's closed. I believe they use the kitchen to cook food for a food truck. I was talking to one of the guys who worked here as he was going in. He didn't really know much English, but I have a feeling they use the kitchen for a food truck. Besides a coat of paint, the apartment across the street looks nearly identical as in the movie. And I spent many a mornings with my family at the Winchell's across the street. It's no longer Winchell's, now it's a Miss Donuts. It almost sounds like the Winchell's got divorced and Mrs. Donuts, now Miss Donuts, got the shop in the divorce settlement. And in case you were wondering, the little girl was saved from Jumbo the Killer Clown by her protective mother. Back here, young lady. You're not going anywhere till you finish your food. This mural is giving me Children of the Corn vibes. Next you see a guy carrying groceries and walking across the street past this Goodwill, which has been a Goodwill as long as I can remember. It's one of the rare instances where a filming location after 30 plus years is still the same business and the building has not been demolished. Which proves my old point, people love cheap clothes. On the bottom edges of the Goodwill store is this marble feature that you will see one of the clowns walk past later on in the movie. Across the street from the Goodwill was the old Johnson's Drug Store. The Johnson's Drug Store was established in 1924 and I love this old neon signage and it was still in operation decades later when they were filming Killer Clowns from Outer Space. This is where the clown was pretending to be an animatronic. 
This is what the building looks like now. Because of a very large earthquake in 1989, the lower half of the building had to be completely remodeled. And we'll talk more about the Loma Prieta earthquake later on in the video. Let's go inside what was the old drugstore and see where the clowns tore stuff up and caused quite a circus in there. But we're gonna have to use our imaginations quite a bit. Some drugstore, you could either get health or you could get AIDS. These clowns are treating this drugstore like it's a Walmart on a typical Sunday night. Although heavily rebuilt, this structure is where they filmed all those scenes. And that's nothing to sneeze at. This is the old Watsonville police station, and it plays the police station in the movie. This poor building is already getting typecast. I guess once a police station, always a police station. You can see the steps to enter the building had been remodeled. Now you go up the steps on the side. I've never been inside the old police station. I never got arrested. Hey, I was a good kid. But let's see if we can take a peek inside right now. They filmed quite a bit of the movie inside this building. Let's see if we can get in. All the filming took place in this room right here. This wall has been knocked down. And as you can see, it's been heavily remodeled, but these two doorways are the same doorways you see in the movie. And this is the doorway that Moody walks through. And behind him, you can see some kind of cell doors that are still there to this day. Killer clowns. Behind the officers is a map, not of Crescent Cove, but of Watsonville, California. There's the Watsonville Airport. Right now, we're just behind Officer Mooney. And the majority of my life living here, I lived up beyond Pinto Lake. I'd like to thank the current residents, the Parks and Rec Department, for letting me goof off a little bit in their building. And they filmed this scene right outside the front doors. Joe Lombardo, he's dead. Around the corner from the old police station was the Fox Theater. I saw so many movies in this building as a kid. This is where I saw Beauty and the Beast for the first time. Where I saw Aladdin for the first time. This is where I saw Jurassic Park for the very first time in this building. also still have a lot of friends and family that live in Watsonville and I really hope I do not bump into any of them because they're gonna see me talking to my camera and think Stanley you have lost your mind what are you doing with your life Welcome to the Watsonville Plaza. This place has been here since the 1860s. And in the movie Killer Clowns, this is where the young man is drawn into the plaza, bandstand, and gazebo. Unfortunately, we cannot go inside the old gazebo because it's permanently closed. I think they're worried that if there's another earthquake, the old gazebo is so old, it might fall down. And just as startling as an earthquake is this weird, odd puppet show that the guy finds inside the gazebo. This is the direction that the camera was pointed at, and this is where the puppet show would have been. <laughs> but it's not all fun and games, as Spikey, the killer clown, appears. And he's tall. His spikes reach near to the top of the gazebo. Oh. 
He points his ray gun at the man and he turns him into a cotton candy cocoon. And here's that view with the aid of my drone. Now one way that you can tell that this is a movie shot in Watsonville and not real life is I've never seen so many white people in Watsonville. White people, white people, white people. I see white people. I would say Watsonville is probably about 80% Latino. So growing up as a kid in class, I was always one of the very few white kids in my school, but we all got along. We were all friends, no matter what cultural differences we had or even language barriers, we all got along. But fast forward about 40 years and a small number of progressive residents, some might call them woke, they did have a racial issue. Let me explain. At the far end of the plaza, there used to be a statue of George Washington right here. Here's a Google map from 2018 showing the bust of George Washington right here in the park. But by 2021, it was now offensive to have George Washington's face here. Yet the people that probably got offended by George Washington in the park probably have a picture of George Washington in their wallet at this very moment, which makes no sense. So they moved the statue from right there, across the street and down the block over to the library. Let's go over to the library and check it out. We're going on a side quest to find the bust of George Washington. It's somewhere in this library. I believe to get to it, you have to go north by northwest. And there it is. This is a pretty impressive bust. I mean, he's no Pamela Anderson, but a pretty nice figure nonetheless. The Watsonville City Council spent nearly $10,000 to move the bust of George Washington less than a block to right here at the library. Talk about living in a clown world. Next, we see Slim, that's the name of the clown, Slim. He's making shadow puppets on the wall that stood right here. Move over Andy Gibb. There's a new shadow dancer in town, and it's Slim. Shadow dancing. But soon it turns deadly as Slim makes a shadow puppet of a monster and it gobbles up these residents of Crescent Cove. Holy the townspeople get the Jiffy Pop treatment and are turned into popcorn. Across the street, the building that Mike and Dave turn in front of, it's still there and the shape is still identical. and Slim escapes by jumping straight up, high above the brick wall. What are you doing, buddy? You could have gotten both of us I'm killed. I'm sorry, I freaked out a little bit. The wall that Slim is making the shadow puppets on is probably the most sentimental of all the locations for me, because that is the site of the old Bakerite Bakery. The Bakerite Bakery stood just about right here. This is the brick wall that Slim was making the shadow puppets on. Here's the Bakerite Bakery, and this was the historic Oddfellows Building, which had to be demolished in 1989 after the Loma Prieta earthquake. Just one year after Killer Clowns from Outer Space premiered, this location would have to be demolished. This building replaced it. It looks very similar, but it's not quite as nice. I guess you could call it a bad cover version. But I can still recall walking on the black and white checkered floor and going to Bakerite Bakery with my family. Bakerite had the best Boston cream style cream filled donuts. I have not tasted anything as good since then. And long before the bakery and generations before Killer Clowns, if you were going to the Oddfellows building, you would park your horse at the edge of the plaza across the street. Now we don't got horse parking, we got horse power. Across the plaza, this is the old Ford's building. I remember they had a cool toy store on the top floor. Anyways, it got demolished also in the earthquake. It was rebuilt later as a Gotchalks, and I don't know what business is in there now. Hi, 
And in this scene from Killer Clowns, filmed at the corner of Peck and Main Street, look at the buildings on the right hand side. Take it all in, because just a year later, they had to bulldoze that entire block. I didn't just feel the earthquake of 1989, I lived through it. Like Destiny's Child, I'm a survivor. And I got the t-shirt to prove it. They sold these a couple of weeks after the earthquake happened, and it says, I survived the earthquake of October 17th, 1989, Watsonville, California. And I still have it. And it still fits. Of course, I have the body of a nine-year-old girl, but it still fits. Down this alleyway is where the biker gang hang out. You can see the impression in the wall still of where the windows used to be. And in the scene we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven windows. And today there are still the impressions of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven windows. So that means the door to hell would have been just about right here. It says that in the film and graffiti, door to hell. It also says, Jimi Hendrix lives, kill em all, and a bunch of other stuff. This alleyway is also where a pretty gruesome killer clown's murder takes place. The clown gives him the old uppercut. Knock my block off. And knocks his head clear off. I'd much rather get turned into popcorn or get put in a cotton candy cocoon. <laughs> they also used this same alleyway for the runaway ice cream truck scene. It's really hard to recreate this scene. This street's so busy. I felt like I was playing real life Frogger. About 30 feet down the street is the corner that Mike Tobacco turns. He turns the corner right here at this beige building. Send in the clowns. Where are the clowns? I wonder if Steven Sondheim ever watched Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Probably too lowbrow for him. Okay guys, we are having Taylor's Hot Dogs. This is a Watsonville institution. Like, if you know, you know. It's been here forever. They have the best chili dogs. So I got two chili dogs. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, this is what we have here. All right, let's see if it's as good as I remember. Oh yeah, they're still good. Okay, those chili dogs are great. I'm nice and full now. Honestly, I'm a little bloated. Uh, I feel like Sam Smith, except I'm you know, straight and not a Satan worshiper. All right, let's continue on. Before we get on the freeway and move on to the next town that portrayed Crystal Cove, we need to stop off here at the Watsonville Community Hospital. Back in the 80s, this was all just an industrial park, like an office park. I remember only one or two companies occupying this place. It was pretty vacant. And this office park is where they filmed the interiors of the circus tent, where they filmed the interiors of the clown spaceship, all those beautiful bright colored interiors and the really amazing sets that they built. That was all at this office park, which is now the Watsonville Community Hospital. I was born in Watsonville, but I wasn't born at this hospital. The hospital moved here in the 1990s. Like Lady Gaga, I was born this way. I was born right here. No, not at this gas station, 
right here at what once was the Watsonville Community Hospital. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I saw a bright light and the doctor smacked me on the rear end and I started crying and I said, where am I? And he said, welcome to the world, little man. You were just born. And I said, was I born into nobility? Am I wealthy? Am I a Nepo baby? And he said, no, you were born into a small agricultural town full of working class families. And I said, ah, crap. I guess I'll work the rest of my life. And I've been working the rest of my life ever since. Welcome to Soquel, California. This is the second city they used as Crystal Cove. And basically, they just filmed on this one street and they used it as B-roll. And that's basically what we did growing up. We drove past Soquel on the freeway to get to Santa Cruz. So for instance, here's that scene we saw earlier at the Goodwill in Watsonville. Then the very next shot is the police car driving through Soquel as B-roll. Now back this up a little bit, we can see the old Soquel County Bank, which is now the Dignity Medical Group building. Later on, the police car goes down Soquel Drive right past a row of businesses. And if we analyze the scene a little bit closer and bump up the brightness and contrast, we can see the business, the Harry Chair. The Harry Chair is still here all those years later, and it still has the same signage. In another scene, the police car takes a right on Soquel Drive past the county bank towards the Harry Chair. Across the street from the Harry Chair was the Sportabout. It was a sporting goods store. The police car drives past the Sportabout and past the Soquel Fire Station. The Sportabout is long gone. Now it's a place to get bagels, but the Soquel Fire Station is still there. I also bumped into these kids, and this was their idea, I swear. Stanley the the Stanley Fox. Fox. Yes, sir, yep. yes, sir. Pretty smart kids. I mean, I've heard so much bad stuff about Gen Z, but these kids give me hope. It's new, it's bright, it's a state beach, it's New Brighton State Beach. We made it. Actually, it's not that new. New Brighton State Beach was established as a state beach in 1933. But before that, it used to be called China Beach because there was an old Chinese fishing village down here. The reason we're at the beach on a kind of gloomy afternoon is because the bridge that Slim, the clown, makes the car fall over is right here. This would have been Slim's POV, his point of view. These cement structures are still here. Under the bridge downtown is where Slim drew some blood. <laughs> And now this area where Slim killed a person is a great place to hang out. There's one other location I wanna show you at New Brighton State Beach, but we're just gonna do a drive-by. There's no place to really park, but when you see it, you'll recognize it. There it is. This is where the police car gets in the accident with the ice cream truck. 
it's only in the movie for about two seconds, but here's where it happened, right here, near the entrance to New Brighton State Beach. The top of this hill is called the top of the world. Let's go. Oh, we made it to the top of the world and it was harder than I ever imagined. The carpenters totally lied to us. It sounded so easy in the song, but we made it. We're on top of the world looking down on creation. But we're here on top of the world, which is a disc golf course, because this is where they film some of the parking scenes, some of the makeout scenes. This is where the townspeople of Crescent Cove would come to make out, do little necking high above the town of Crescent Cove. That was a hot tune from the Dwar Man, but now we're gonna slow it down a little bit for all you makeout artists at the top of the world. It's pretty cool that they used the real life location, top of the world, in the movie. Ice cream, ice cream, we brought our goodies here to you, a tasty treat. And they brought the Terenzi Brothers ice cream truck all the way up here. This worked out just great. Don't blame me. I didn't even want to come here. Hey, why don't we try the drive-in? Oh, that's dumb. But it's not all fun and games. As the killer clowns arrive to the top of the world and turn the cuddlers into cotton candy. That's McReed's Jeep. Who's McReed? Bob McReed? He was up here tonight with me and Debbie. Those are his glasses. They got him. He's dead. If Watsonville was my hometown, then Santa Cruz was my playground. Oh, that's great. We used to come here every weekend during my teenage years and people watch, girl watch, go to concerts, buy records and CDs and books. We loved it down here. And the killer clowns like it down here. They're having a little parade down Cooper Street. The scene starts off with Mike Tobacco and the Terenzi brothers going north on Cooper Street and looking north. But all the action on the next shot is actually south on Cooper Street. This is where the clown parade is taking place. This is the window where the clown throws down the cotton candy cocoon. And these two businesses, they used to be right here. Yes, just like Watsonville, Santa Cruz got hammered by the earthquake. And two of the businesses that you see in the movie are no longer there. The Shen Dryden, a clothing store, and the Shen Gallery both did not survive the 1989 earthquake. A year after Killer Clowns premiered, these businesses would be gone. Here's what it looks like today. But the Shen Gallery was one of the first businesses to reopen after the earthquake, and they're located just around the corner. And the Shen Dryden, it also reopened a few blocks over on Walnut Street, and they stayed in business until 2008 when I believe the owner retired. Thankfully, these two buildings survived the earthquake. This building, which is now the Pacific Wave store, that the ice cream truck drives by, 
used to be the old Santa Cruz County Bank, and it's been here since 1895. So the ice cream truck took a left on Pacific Avenue, and we're only a couple of blocks away from another location. On California Street in Santa Cruz is Debbie Stone's house, and they actually use this street for a lot of the chase scenes also. So right before the chase, we see one of the clowns right outside Debbie Stone's house. Look how fat this tree's gotten. And then the chase is on. Across the street from Debbie's house and looking down the other way is where the camera's pointed when the cars drive down California Street. Hey, Mike. Then, these two houses that the cars pass by are right next to Debbie Stone's house. I'm not joking, they're right next to Debbie's house. Now in this scene, we're actually looking at the same house that we saw in the last scene, and you can see a piece of Debbie's house in the background. Now as they turn the corner here, this is opposite of Debbie's house. Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. This is where the climax of the movie happens. There's a lot of loud copyrighted music inside. So once we get inside the boardwalk, I'm just gonna switch to voiceovers, but I'm also gonna show you something related to killer clowns that I think you're gonna like. Ooh, movie filmed at the boardwalk. Sudden Impact, The Lost Boys of course, Bumblebee, we covered that on my channel. And we also did us, but where's Killer Clowns? How come Killer Clowns gets no love? Somebody in the marketing department here at the boardwalk should be putting cotton candy if you ask me. This is where they built the crazy house facade. And a lot of this building is still here and it still has the same color scheme, which is pretty cool. The clown car drives past the Super Sunday's little building here. And check out this pole. I'm almost dead positive this is the exact same building, slightly remodeled, and there's the pole. This back half section of the boardwalk is only open on weekends or busier holidays, but that's okay, they didn't film anything down past this way. Mike and Debbie run past the Giant Dipper roller coaster. Then you see them run past Hot Dog on a Stick. This place has been here forever and it's still here. I mean, who doesn't love a processed meat product on a piece of wood? But those clown decals aren't the only clowns in this park. Let me show you. The cool thing I wanna show you is in here inside Fright Walk. Oh man, I hate being scared. I hate jump scares. Let's go. We're going in. But after surviving about 10 minutes of walking through this maze and all the jump scares and all the claustrophobic areas, you arrive to the killer clowns from outer space. Check this out. Look at Slim. I can't remember this guy's name. Oh, and this is the giant clown at the very end of the movie, the big giant clown. Yeah, that's him. This room is so cool. I wish it was a little brighter in here because it's hard to capture on film. The Killer Clowns from Outer Space, here at the Boardwalk. I hope
hope you guys enjoyed this Killer Clowns filming location adventure. And now that you know a little bit about me, I'm gonna go change my identity, try to get a new social security number, and I'll see you guys in the next video sometime, somewhere, soon. Oh, also, if you could like and subscribe, that would be killer. See you guys later. Bye. So you may be wondering, did I come out here in the 80s and watch them filming Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Well, I was living in Watsonville then. I was about nine, but I didn't know about it. Somehow, it slipped under my radar. I mean, they filmed everything at night. I had school the next day. I Somehow, I just never knew about it. I did come out here another time and watch them film a TV movie called A Whisper Kills, which was shot around the same time, and I met Lonnie Anderson and Joe Penny.